In today's video, you asked for it, you got it. I'm gonna give you a tour of my galley, also known as a kitchen, part one of a four part quick series on the four distinct rooms in my Winnebago Travado 59G. G is the floor plan. We're gonna measure those cabinets, we're gonna measure those drawers, we're gonna measure the fridge and freezer. You're probably gonna be impressed with how much storage there is in this small space. You're gonna see what I stow and where and why I do such things as have one saute pan. Then I'm gonna share with you three mistakes that I've made and one recommendation. You don't wanna miss any of it. Stay tuned to the end. Let's roll. appreciate that. My name is Scott. I'm your host. Welcome to Go Small, Live Large. We are a YouTube channel dedicated to the RV lifestyle, in particular, a Class B RV. That would be a van. <laughs> um, I've been full-time since February 2019 in my Winnebago Travado. 50,000 miles, 30 states. Learned a few things, and that's what we do here at Go Small, Live Large. We collectively learn, we share, you decide what's best for you. You might wonder why I'm living in a van. Am I a broke high school dropout? Nope. I did this on purpose. 2017 and 18 in particular, super unhappy with the way my life was. So I reinvented it. I reinvented my job. My partner Kyle and I, we put together a fantasy plan as he called it, and we execute on that. We took delivery of the Winnebago Travado in late 2018, and I've been full-time ever since. If you're into the Class B RV lifestyle, vans, travel places, cool people, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel. That's what we're all about here. We're just about to cross 10,000 people, which is an amazing accomplishment for this channel. Let's jump into the galley and let me show you why I love this floor plan and the kitchen, the galley as it's called in particular. Let's go. So welcome to my galley. Uh, this is one of the most amazing uh, spaces, the rooms as I call it, in my Travado, in my opinion, um, because it's so functional and it's so large. How large is it, you ask? That's a great question. Let's measure. I like to measure things here on Go Small Live Large because I'm kind of spatially challenged. You know, a four by four by six, uh, not really sure what that means. So I like to see it and measure it. Hopefully you will get some value out of that. Um, if somebody wants to ask me down below in the comments, ask me why this is my $108,000 measuring tape. I'd love to share that story with you. So let's measure the galley. I'm going from the fridge to the, the side of the van here, essentially. And let's call that, uh, it's about four feet wide, which is pretty wide. And let's c call it from the, oops, from the, the seat here to the bathroom. Let's call it, um, let's call it five feet. So it's basically four feet by five feet. And for you uh, height curious people, uh, it's 74 inches, which is just over uh, six feet. So it's 74 inches uh, floor to ceiling. What I want to measure here for you is the, the width between these two spots. And this is right at, uh, let's call it 17 and a half inches. And why that's important is because you can pass through this. A lot of the vans are doing this thing, and that's not cool to me. Um, let's measure the cabinet height. Cabinet height is, let's call it uh, three feet, 37 inches. Let's measure the width of the galley cabinet, and that is at 41 inches, and the depth is 20 inches. Now what's cool about my floor plan is, remove the coats, <laughs> is it has a counter extension, which I use all the time as a stand-up desk. Particularly when I have an awesome view, this is a great place to work for the day. If it's a kind of a crummy view or I have to close the door, I step over here, accomplish the same thing, standing desk. So with the extension uh, up and running, we're now at 54 inches, which is, um, about four and a half feet wide. So really functional cabinets or a countertop space. And um, I just love this setup. So what this is here, this is a propane cooktop. This is a marine style sink with the, full, with the folding faucet, which works really well. Um, I use the bathroom sink more often just because of that little, uh, you know, you gotta pull it out and, and you know, get it going. Um, whereas the sink in the bathroom, I just, it goes instantly. A couple of other things that I really like about my galley is it has a window. The window does swing open. It's an awning style window. Um, I am not sure the current status of where that is in the 2020 or 21 um, Winnebago. Some uh, people have told me they've screwed them shut. Some people said they can't open them at all. 
I do like the fact that I can open mine because it's really, really cool to get some fresh air in. And I have this super no tech a reminder to put in the sliding door. The, hey, the galley window's open. Don't open the door and smash your window. So if you have a 59G and you have that have had that issue, there's a hot tip for you right out of the gate. The window, by the way, measures uh, it's about 12 by uh, 12 by 14, and I do love it. I have my paper towel set up right here, as you can see. This wire basket came with the uh, Travado, and this is enough to hold some salt and pepper oil. Um, balsamic vinegar and some honey and my towel and my Texan cookbook. Look at that. That is not a Texan size cookbook, but the recipes are Texan size. What questions do you have about the galley from this standpoint right away? We're going to shift our attention to the microwave. All right. So the microwave here is clearly at a eye level height. I really do like that. Um, one pro tip is to put bulky items into your microwave. So it's like uh, rice cakes, fortune cookies. Who doesn't like fortune cookies? And my tr microwave is a traditional non-convection microwave. It's rather on the small side, but it is certainly large enough to get some, you know, a fair amount of stuff done. So this is uh, 12 inches by eight inches by 12 inches. It's probably a maximum output is 900 watts. So what makes this kind of special is that I have to use my Volta on inverter on to get the microwave to run and it is no problem at all super easy so i love again the height that it's just so easy to get in and out of and one button touch and you can get things going well we don't want to heat up the rice crackers so one of the things i just love about my 59g floor plan is the size of this is just the refrigerator ladies and gentlemen this is just the fridge freezers down below um, this is a Nova Cool, has a locking mechanism here. And even though I sometimes have forgot to lock this thing, it is really kind of hard to open and doesn't pop open by accident. I wouldn't want to try it. So I always flip that closed when I'm traveling. So open. What I want to do is just kind of show you the sheer size of this thing. Uh, what you're looking at here is a half a gallon of half and half. You can fit two of these bad boys in here really, really easily. Um, you get about a six pack of uh, pop cans, beer, whatever up here. And if I swing this all the way open, what I want to do is kind of measure this for you because it is really giant. So there's two shelves, upper shelf and the lower shelf, and then there's this tray. So I'm going to do the, um, the shelves here. So this is, we'll call it 16 inches deep. We'll call it 16 inches wide. And we're going to call just those two shelves, um, I'm going to call it 14 and a half inches uh, tall. And then down below, of course, you have a you know, 16 wide by, uh, let's call it eight inches, um, by, ooh, ah, by uh, eight inches. And what that allows me to do is store a fair amount of food. I do fresh food in here all the time, and I've just found the size of this um, refrigerator to be amazing. I'm continuously amazed at what's what this allows you to, to store in here. In fact, you can see here that I've got beer standing up on end. Boy, by golly, if you haven't tried Shiner Bock from Shiner, Texas, you got to try that Bock-style beer. It's absolutely fabulous. The point being here is you can stand these things up on the end, and you get six this way. So you actually can get a 12-pack right in this area right here, or a 12-pack of cans on the, on the end with the cans rolling out this way. So super, super convenient. Again, these are just the elements, uh, or little condiments, what have you. This little sliding basket is really, really great. Let's look at the freezer. All right, so looking at the freezer, um, again, it's below the refrigerator. Same deal with the locking mechanism here. Got that open, and uh, while there's no door storage, it has a lot of space in here. Let me show you that. So this is to the back. I'm going to call it 15 inches deep. It's uh, 13, 14 inches wide, and between the two compartments, it's just about 11 inches tall. And this thing holds a tremendous amount pardon my knee, uh, of, of food. So this is a half gallon of ice cream. Um, it fits a London broil steak. <laughs> it, this is um, a seven. This is a six pound bag of ice. Uh, hamburger patties, frozen veggies, cheese tortillas. Uh, it, is, it is just the most amazing amount of space in a freezer in a class B. Um, for example, the K floor plan of the Winnebago Travado has kind of the dorm style fridge, which is about this big. It's at the floor level, which is uh, not cool for me and has a really tiny like uh, dorm style freezer. So you couldn't do any of this 
in a K or traditional uh, camper van refrigerator, unless it's got one of these big giant things right there. So curious, are you surprised by the storage capacity of this? I actually did a video on the amount of st uh, storage capacity in the freezer. You want to check that out. And another thing that makes this really a great uh, fridge freezer combination is not only the sheer size, but it's, written, uh, it's compressor driven. No propane does not need to be necessarily level to operate. And it runs on 12 uh, volt direct current, which means the volta on inverter off. And this will run for um, probably close to five to seven days, depending on what's going on um, with the fridge and freezer operating as you would expect. I have not turned this system off in nearly two years of ownership, except for maybe six times. And three of those was uh, flying away for extended periods of time. One of them was in when the rig was in for a service for 10 days. So what questions do you have on the fridge and freezer? Are you surprised by the amount of content that that thing holds? Um, what's in your fridge? I showed you what's in mine. I wanna show you this, and this is the wardrobe. I'm one of the crazy class bay people. I actually keep clothes in my wardrobe. Uh, some folks have modded this out to put a bunch of shelves in here to hold cooking utensils, to hold lots of cans of corn and uh, green beans. And I'm not into a canned food guy, not into canned soup. Um, I like fresh prepared foods and grilled foods in particular. Not judging, just saying, I'm kind of odd by not having a bunch of pantry items. I use my wardrobe for clothes. I did a video on this uh, quite a while back as to how much capacity this wardrobe actually has in it. I've actually added some uh, command hooks here, you can see for, for belts, for a hat brush. And then these items I've actually just rolled up and they're kind of secured by the microwave power cord, which is plugged into the side here, which is kind of interesting. And this is where I, I keep my lint roller. Um, if, you haven't, if you have a pet with you, you're gonna wanna see the video I did on my cat, Luke, because um, I use this every morning to lint roll the bed uh, to get all the cat hair and dander and uh, lint off the sheets to keep that clean. So that stores down here. One thing I'd like to point out, we just did a, camp, a, can, uh, a channel camp out uh, in Wallace, Idaho. And I wanna give a huge shout out to um, tonight. I'll put the information, information down below. Uh, this is not a Catholic school punishment tool. Any of you remember that? Oh my gosh, I do. Um, this is like a cheese board. We met this really cool couple, uh, the Knights, in um, Wallace, Idaho. They make these, they handcraft these out of wood. This is actually, I had, to, I had the artist sign it. Um, this is salted, well, that's no, not salted, splatted maple. That's the actual uh, uh, natural wood with that black striping in it. It was so cool. They were super generous. They were very intrigued by our vans. We did an open house. So thank you to the Knights, and you'll want to check them out online. Again, I'll put them down below. Um, I can't wait to serve you cheese and some hors d'oeuvres on this at our next channel camp out or meet up. But this is what's the kind of things I store in here in my, in my uh, wardrobe. What questions do you have on this? Do you plan to mod this out if you have a, uh, a wardrobe like this and put pantry items in, or are you actually gonna use it for food? Okay, you're probably wondering how big this thing is, so let's do our measurement. So from the bottom of the cabinet, and it's kind of recessed, so you got a few inches on either side here. So this is a little subjective, but I'm gonna say this is, uh, let's call it 50, 56 inches tall, and it is uh, eight inches wide, eight inches wide, and it's full depth, which is really pretty amazing. So it's 20 inches deep. That's a lot of storage. Again, check out the video I did. Um, I currently have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 hangers. I've got a couple of them that are holding two or three shirts. Far too many clothes, but I love my cowboy clothes. Um, are you surprised at how much storage space is in the wardrobe? I continue to be shocked at how much I can cram into this thing. Love my wardrobe. Thank you, Winnebago, for doing a good job on this. Plus, one, two coats. Pretty amazing. Okay, this side of the galley is where additional magic happens. Hey, by the way, if you're getting anything out of this, if you learned something you didn't know before, sure would appreciate a thumb up. That helps me know that you liked it, helps others know that you liked it, helps YouTube know that you liked it, and what that means is they share it out to other people with the same kind of curiosity you have. So thumb up really would be awesome. Hey, I'll ask for your subscription. If you haven't subscribed already, you're into vans, RVing, really cool places, really great people, consider subscribing to the channel. It'd be an honor to have you as a subscriber. Okay. 
to the galley. So what I want to do is uh, look at this one up here above. So the way I have my cabinet here is I don't like it. Um, I don't like the, my current setup. I do like the total space. So let's look at that. And I'll tell you why I don't like this. I'm looking for your advice here. So this is going to be, I'm going to call it, um, so it's a little wider at the bottom. I'm going to say it's probably 12 inches at the bottom. And on top, it's more like seven inches because it kind of goes like this to follow the van. So 12 on the bottom, seven on top. Wide is 32 inches. So that's pretty big. That's about two and a half feet, which is pretty amazing. And height wise, I'm going to say it's probably mm, 11 inches functional. And the way I have this set up is I have my my dinnerware here. I use paper plates and paper bowls. I use paper cups for my coffee. And then I have um, plastic cups for wine. I've got my groovy <laughs> stainless steel Winnebago cups I got at the Grand National Rally. Got some real glassware. This is Shiner Bach. You gotta drink Shiner Bach in a Shiner Bach glass, right? Um, or how about PBR? Any Paps fans out there? Yes. Um, so those go in those glasses and that they tuck right here and then my paper goes here and then I have this shelf system just to give a little extra additional storage. So I got rice, tortillas, this is my protein drink, protein shaker, um, this is my special whiskey glass if you haven't seen that video. Um, the um, Warsaw Glass Company, he cut this for me specifically on site, did a really amazing video, my whiskey. <laughs> And um, this is where my coffee section is. This is where I store instant coffee. Don't judge me. I use pretty good coffee um, for instance. And then this is my tea kettle. Um, I have this link down below. This is probably one of my favorite items in the van. Use it every morning throughout the day. Love drinking coffee. And that's where it stores right there. My challenge with this is this content shift a lot. And I've used a couple of these you know, rubber mat things to keep things from uh, sliding around. I haven't found one that works yet. What I'm thinking about doing is getting some carpet tiles or it's like sticky backed. I wouldn't pull the sticky, you know, the, um, the protective film off. I would leave it on so it wouldn't stick to the bottom, but cut these to size so it's a carpeted bottom so these things won't shift. Uh, Cause this is probably the most annoying cabinet because these contents shift a lot. And with the braking and accelerating, what I do when I go to open it, after I've been traveling in motion is I actually kind of hold my hand up here because inevitably something falls out. So I'm curious if you have a Travato, if you have an RV, if you have this kind of a cabinet system, what do you do above to keep things from moving around and falling out? I haven't found the perfect answer yet. So this is where we learn together. Let me know, comment below, and then share. I'll share it out for everybody to learn together. But I love this space. It's a tremendous amount of space. And you can see I have a lot of space in here. Positive locking, you gotta love that. All right, let's turn our attention down here to the cabinet itself. All right, so what we have here is there's three drawers. They're all the same size, and then we have a cupboard, I'll call it. So, and then these are the switches. So this goes to the side light outside, um, kind of on the patio side, as I call it. Um, this is for the lights above the dinette, and this is for the only dimmable light in the rig, which is the light bar across um, the bulkhead, the dinette. So that's what these are outlet here, hate the placement of this because if you stick something out, it snags. It really should be there when a big old hope works on that. Um, there's another outlet right here. As you can see, I use this one all the time. And then these switches are for the lights in the, um, in the cabin. So the one above you and then the one back here. And this is for the bathroom, bathroom lights. So that's what those are. Um, so what I do is turn our uh, focus to this. So I'm gonna open this up. Again, there's three of them. They're all the same size. And the way I organize this is I have dollar store baskets and I have my cutlery here. So I use um, compostable flatware. Um, I tried to do the, um, the, the, you know, the metal forks and stuff and it just was a tremendous amount of work and resource consumption. Didn't wanna do that. So I use these, they're kind of expensive. I get them from Amazon, they're in my uh, gear store. Um, I really like these because they're not squeaky plastic. They feel really good in the mouth and in the hand and they break down unlike plastic, which takes, you know, <laughs> a million years to break down. Um, so then my, my junk drawer, I scissors I use all the time, just varying things, uh, bike lights, um, business cards, here's the flashlight, keep handy, right? And um, so it's ready to go at a moment's notice. So let's measure this. So this is a functional, um, I'll call it 10 and a half, 10 and three quarters, uh, what is that, wide? Um, by 12 deep or long 
And depth, I'm going to say is, get in there, um, I'm gonna say it's probably about three and a half. So three and a half inches wide. So that's what I have in there. This is a really good setup for me. In this one, I actually have my cooking utensils. It's the same size drawer. This is my single saute pan. I use a pot that comes in my Instapot, and this is the only cooking uh, implement that I have in terms of pans. And you can see my uh, collection of spoons, and tongs, I use all the time with the grill, measuring cups. Um, so I am super lightweight on this, and you know what? It works really well, and I had all this stuff. I bought a whole cookware set. Talk about that later. And um, down here, what I have is a uh, Ziploc bag full of Ziploc bags, coffee cup lids, um, protein powder, or um, uh, you know, protein bars, oatmeal, coffee cup lids. Um, extra space, really. It's kind of empty right now. So that's what's going on in there. So I'm curious. Uh, let me know if you have an RV now. What am I missing? What should this look like? What storage tips do you have on the, the drawers here? Turning our attention to the, uh, the galley cabinet here, I'm gonna move this out. So this is a bag of shopping bags. And I was gonna get one of those, you know, big long things that you stuff the bags in and you pull them out at the bottom. But I realized it was actually gonna take up a tremendous amount of space. And this is really the best thing I've found to store the bags. And what I do is when I get one home, I just wrap it real tight into, a, into like a little ball. And it sort of stays in that, in that, in that, um, you know, in that size, and it works pretty good. And I can take it in, take it out, and it's really flexible. If I put some bulky things in there, um, it's just gonna squish down. So let me measure this. There is a wall uh, to this cabinet, so we're gonna measure from the wall to the cabinet. It's about 10 inches deep, and I'm gonna say is about uh, 21 inches wide, and tall is I'm gonna say probably two feet. Now, what's interesting about this space is that you have to have this pretty flexible. You can't have any permanent shelves, if you will, because the clean out for the shower drain is under this uh, cabinet here. You remove the floor to the cabinet and you clean the shower drain that way. So you're gonna be real careful. You don't wanna put a bunch of permanent type stuff in here because when you clean the shower drain, you'll have to get all of your stuff out of here to clean the drain, which, it's not a pain, it's just you know, something you gotta do about every seven to 10 showers. And um, just be aware that you can't really load this thing up with a bunch of shelves because you're gonna have yourself in a pickle. Um, what I hold in here is just extra plates. I got a couple of mixing bowls. I've only used these a few times, but they do come in handy. Um, again, paper, uh, these are compostable, all compostable. Um, and these are Dollar General bins. Get these, these things are amazing. They're a buck, first of all, uh, but they fit in here absolutely perfectly. I have two of these for kind of household items. Um, I got keep my flatware. I got bear spray. Bear spray. Haven't had a need for this. I'm not really hiking a whole lot. Maybe it's a person deterrent, as is a bear deterrent. Uh, it was two cans for 35 bucks. Costco, Butte, Montana. Keep my um, Windex in here. And then there's a water filter. The water filter comes with the Travado. It's, it filters the cold water coming out of the tap here at the sink. Um, I've upgraded my filter to uh, the Clear 2.0. If you haven't seen my video on that, you'll want to upgrade your filter. Um, I think they're coming with a better filter now, but this was just super basic um, Culligan filter that came with the Travado. Uh, again, I've upgraded that to Clear 2.0, much better filtering of the water down to one micron, which is what it's all about, right? So these guys just kind of stack in here. Uh, and I'm curious, if, there, if you figure out a better way to do this, I am all ears. Uh, this is working for me, clearly got a, a little dishcloth thing there. Um, so that's the deal on the cabinet. Okay, rounding out the galley is this space right here. Uh, this is the Luke shelf. My cat Luke loves to uh, sit here when he wants a treat. But is this thing right here. And this is what I use for spices um, to be transparent with you. I haven't really used any of these. Um, very often. Um, it does hold aluminum foil. Let me measure this for you. Let's see if we can do this one-handed. This will be fun. Bear with me. It's kind of an odd-shaped drawer. Um, so it's 15 inches wide by uh, two inches deep, <laughs> or tall rather, and depth is, I'm gonna call it nine inches. What do you call it? Well, I'd say eight inches just to be safe. So not super big. I had my 
utensils in here initially and they were kind of hard. They always jammed up trying to get this thing in and out. And I do like it being here. It's nice having that drawer, but I'm curious what you would use that for. One additional thing I would like to show you here is my garbage can. This is a uh, perfect place in the 59G floor plan because this is kind of useless space right here. Um, from my perspective anyway, what you're looking at here is the subwoofer to the Jensen system. It just clears this, um, the wardrobe cupboard door, you can see that, right? <laughs> and um, I got this from Walmart. I'll link it down below. All right, so that kind of runs out the galley tour. Hope you got something out of that. If you did, give it a thumb up. If you learned something you didn't know before, that would be awesome. Again, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, it would be an honor to have you part of the success of this channel. The three mistakes I made, I would suggest you don't do, and that is, number one, I brought way too much stuff with me. I bought a bunch of stuff from Walmart and all these Target and all these places, glass plates, glasses, silverware. It was a, I ended up giving it away or throwing it away. It was just a waste of, of money in the end because I learned that paper was a better way to go. Number two, winterize your rig if you're not going to be using it properly. That is to empty the system out uh, of water. I didn't do that. I flew off to London for two weeks. It was uh, the uh, uh, fall, it was November 2018, and uh, I froze my Travato. The water filter was the, um, is what broke. It cracked because the water expanded and cracked it. That was actually the only damage. I did a video on that. You'll want to see that. Um, so my, don't make my mistake of not wintering, winter, winterizing my van when I'm away for a long period of time. Winterizing simply means to uh, empty the system full of water, put in RV antifreeze, and you're good to go. And my third tip is, in my floor plan, my smoke detector is right above the stove. So if you're cooking anything except boiling water, this thing always goes off. I did a video on this. Um, and what I do now is I take out the battery. Uh, just while I'm cooking, I leave this thing hanging like this to remind me the battery is out. Uh, some folks have recommended changing this position of this smoke detector with the one up front, which I'm guessing is carbon monoxide. I obviously haven't done that yet. Another viewer has recommended putting um, like, a, like a rain cap over this. Um, Either of those probably would work. I probably should switch these around because, again, this thing is super annoying. And what I do, just as a real quick hack, is just to remove the battery and then put it back in when I'm done. Um, but let me tell you, if you don't do something about that and your smoke detector is right over the stove, uh, the first time you go off, it's going to scare the crap out of you. Don't do that. So my big recommendation for you in terms of the galley is to load or buy as you go. Don't do what I did and buy a whole bunch of stuff from... Uh, stores, Amazon, whatever, and load these things up only to find out you didn't need any of it. My favorite example is my dear friend and the lovely and gracious Ginger Walkabout. She had three skillets in the same kind of kitchen. I don't know where she put it, but you definitely, I don't need three skillets. Turns out she didn't either. She got rid of all of them. I do have an Instapot. I store it under the bed in the back. Um, I use it infrequently and I do like it. It's a great system. And I use the metal pot for uh, cooking things, boiling water, making pasta, uh, as a pot and I use the paper plates as a lid on the Instant Pot. So my recommendation for you is don't load up a bunch of stuff, buy it or load it into your galley as you need it. So as we wind down, I just want to thank you for watching today. Really appreciate that. I just enjoyed making this video. For those of you that have been ga uh, galley curious, hopefully I answered some of your questions. Boy, if I don't, put them down below. Um, and again, what did I miss? What are some of the hacks you've learned? I would love to know that so we can share that out with the, with the group. Stay tuned because right behind this, I have a, a bed tour, bedroom tour, and a bathroom tour, followed by the great room tour. So four videos about these specific spaces, a lot of questions on the galley, a lot of questions on the bedroom, and a lot of questions on the bathroom. So stay tuned and watch for those coming up very, very soon. Um, if you haven't been to my website lately, please go to GoSmallLiveLarge.com. There's content on there you're not going to see on YouTube. There's audience recommendations I actually post there because this is, again, all about learning, sharing. You decide what's best for you. We have events. Even in these times, I'm doing small, socially distanced, masked up <laughs> um, events with people because I like to meet you. I want to understand your story. I want to help out one-on-one. -on -one. And you guys help me as much as I help you. That's the way we roll here. Again, learn, share, decide. That's what it's all about. So with that, I thank you again. And we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.